These stars refuse to die. Scientists call them zombie stars. Stars live and die in spectacular ways, but some refuse to stay dead. These zombie stars are stars that explode in a supernova, but come back to life for an encore. Here's how it happens. A white dwarf star, the remnant of a once mighty star, siphons material from a nearby companion star. As it feeds, it gains mass and pressure builds until, boom, it triggers a supernova explosion. But this is no ordinary supernova. Instead of disappearing into the cosmic void, the white dwarf survives and can reignite, going through multiple supernovae. These zombie stars just don't know when to quit. Here's the mind-bending part. Some of these zombie stars might explode over and over, even consuming their companion star entirely, leaving behind a lone, undead star drifting through the galaxy. Imagine a star like our sun, shining bright for billions of years, but eventually even stars run out of fuel. When that happens, they don't just vanish. Instead, sun-like stars transform into a white dwarf. A white dwarf is about the size of Earth, but it packs in a mass nearly as much as the sun. That means it's incredibly dense. A single teaspoon of white dwarf material would weigh as much as a car. Yeah, it's that heavy. After forming, most white dwarfs spend their time cooling down and slowly fading away over billions of years. They eventually become dark, cold remnants known as black dwarfs. Though our universe isn't old enough for any to exist yet. But here's the thing. Not every white dwarf ends its story there. Some of these stellar remnants get a second chance at life, transforming into what we call zombie stars. Here's the story. Not all stars live out their days alone. Many are part of binary star systems, where two stars dance around each other in a cosmic waltz. But when one of these stars is a white dwarf, things can get interesting. See, the white dwarf might be small, but it has a powerful gravitational pull. So powerful, in fact, that it can start siphoning off material from its companion star, like a cosmic vampire. But it doesn't just gobble up this gas directly. The material forms a swirling disk around the white dwarf, called an accretion disk. This disk slowly spirals inward, feeding the white dwarf bit by bit. As the white dwarf pulls in more and more material, it starts to gain mass, and the pressure inside it builds. This isn't a quick process. It can take thousands, even millions of years, but the results are worth the wait. With all that added mass and pressure, the white dwarf is now a ticking time bomb. It's setting the stage for something truly explosive, literally. There's a critical point in this process, something called the Chandrasekhar limit. It's a fancy term for the maximum mass a white dwarf can handle before it says, I've had enough. Once it crosses this limit, the pressure inside becomes too intense and it triggers a runaway reaction and boom, a supernova explosion. But this isn't just any explosion. It's a thermonuclear blast that completely tears the star apart, or at least that's what usually happens. But here's where it gets really wild. Instead of being obliterated, this white dwarf survives the blast. It's like a star that just refuses to die, coming back from the dead like some kind of cosmic zombie. Now, instead of drifting quietly into the cosmic void, our zombie star is still here. It's like the star that just won't quit, a true cosmic zombie. But how does it survive something so cataclysmic? The secret lies in how it explodes. During the supernova, only part of the white dwarf's material is blown away. What's left behind is still dense, still incredibly hot, and still very much alive, if you can call it that. And believe it or not, this zombie star can actually start the whole process over again. If it's still in a binary system, it might just resume siphoning material from its companion, gaining mass once more. It's like it's reloading for round two, or three, or even four. Sometimes they do this over and over again, like a cosmic loop of destruction and rebirth. Each explosion might not be as powerful as the first, but the star just keeps on going. This can go on until the companion star is completely consumed.
In the end, the white dwarf might be left alone, having devoured its companion entirely. Without its companion, the white dwarf can no longer siphon material, but it's still there. A remnant of a star that refused to die, now wandering through the galaxy like a cosmic ghost. And while it might not go through another supernova without a companion, this star's story isn't over. One possibility is that the white dwarf could collide with another star. If that happens, it might spark yet another supernova. Or it might merge with another white dwarf, creating an even more massive object, a neutron star. But if no collision happens, this zombie star could simply fade away over billions of years. It would slowly cool down, losing its brightness until it becomes what we call a black dwarf. A star that's completely cold and dark. A stellar remnant that's practically invisible. The thing is, the universe is still too young for any black dwarfs to exist yet. But in time, this could be the final fate of our zombie star. A dark, cold, and lonely object drifting through space. A ghost of its former self. As you can imagine, these zombie stars have captured the attention of astronomers all over the world. The more we learn about them, the more questions we seem to have. Recent models suggest that some zombie stars might not just explode multiple times, but could also merge with their companions in ways that create entirely new types of stellar objects. We're talking about the potential for ultra-massive white dwarfs, or even strange hybrid stars that challenge our understanding of stellar evolution. These discoveries are reshaping how we think about the life and death of stars. Each new finding adds another layer of complexity to the story of zombie stars, showing us that the universe is full of surprises, even in places we thought we understood. Don't forget to watch the video on the right and subscribe. Thanks for being part of Cosmonology.